So hey, guitar fanatics, welcome back or welcome to the channel. If you've watched many of my other videos, you know one of the biggest things I talk about helping guitar players develop is what I call fluency, or as I define it, the ability to move around the fretboard without ever getting lost or stuck. If you're a developing player, or even a more accomplished player, you probably have the pentatonic scales as a tool in your toolbox. And more than likely, you learn these scales as box patterns that are played vertically across the neck of the guitar, basically ascending and descending until we run out of strings. What I wanna show you today is how to play these scales up and down the neck of the guitar horizontally by using what I call the pentatonic connectors, keynotes that allow us to shift effortlessly from pattern to pattern. Hey, do me a favor by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I'm Charlie Long, let's play some guitar. So I remember vividly the first time I heard a guitar player play something like this with pentatonic scales. What made it so different to my ears was the amount of territory that was being covered on the neck. Sure, I'd heard players play fast pentatonic stuff, but it was mostly sped up blues licks. Or maybe some intervallic repeating sequence. Hearing Eric Johnson's record Tones for the first time opened my ears to an entirely new, to me, way of using pentatonics. And that was moving up and down the neck while also moving across it. And it was very obvious that this kind of approach required some position shifts, maybe even multiple position shifts in the same run if the run went on long enough. Now, while there's any number of variations and approaches you might use to move from pattern to pattern, this is the system that I came up with. For each pentatonic pattern, we're gonna identify one note to shift from and another note that we're going to shift to. The notes of the pentatonic scale repeat after every five notes, since the scale only has five notes. Once you've identified the connector from one pattern to the next pattern, up or down the neck, whatever number order that falls in the scale, it's always going to be in the same spot. So if we shift on the first note of the pattern, we'll always shift on that note each time we come to it. The third note will always shift on that note. We're gonna start out using only whole steps or two frets as our connecting points. As you get better at this, you can create other shapes that might involve shifting one of the minor third or three fret intervals but let's keep it as simple as possible for now. So let's dig into these pentatonic connectors. We're gonna be playing in the key of G today. Some of you might be more familiar with these shapes as E minor pentatonic. So I'll try to remember to refer to the proper number pattern in both E minor and G major. The pattern we're gonna get started with today is E minor pattern two or G major pattern one with the G note at the third fret of the low E string. We're not gonna stay there very long, however. We're gonna play the second note of that pattern at the fifth fret, and then we're gonna slide into the B note at the seventh fret. Now, we've technically moved into pattern three of E minor or pattern two of G major. We're gonna move on to play the notes D and E at the fifth and seventh frets of the A string, and we've created our first five note shape. I'm a visual learner, and I've always tried to associate techniques with pictures. So we make a visual of this, we've got the following. Two notes, a slide, and then two more notes. And we can take that two notes slide followed by two notes all the way up the fretboard like so. Here's another rule for now. All the shapes that we make up today are gonna to consist of five notes because, well, pentatonic, but they're all gonna consist of four notes that we fret normally and one that we slide into. Now the slide could happen anywhere in that five note pattern as we'll see. We can slide from the first note to the second or the fourth note to the fifth, but we'll always have four normally fretted notes and a note we slide into. Now that we've got a feel for this, let's move on to the next pattern. We're gonna be in pattern three of E minor or pattern two of G major. So we're starting at the A note at the fifth fret of the E string. That pattern looks like this. 
We've got a whole step up to B as the second note, so we're going to take advantage of that and we're going to use it as our connector right away. So we're going to slide into the B from the A with the first finger and then we're going to play the C note at the eighth fret. So we've moved up a pattern. The next notes are the E and G at the seventh and tenth frets of the A string. So we've established our five note shape. This time the slide is from the first note to the second note. That's A to B. Now it's going to start over with the A at the seventh fret of the D string. We slide into the B at the ninth fret, play D at the twelfth fret. Then we play E and G at frets 9 and 12 of the G string. Now we've got another A at the 10th fret of the B string. Slide into the B at 12, then play the D at the 15th. And we finish this pattern off with the E and G at frets 12 and 15 of the high E string. On to the next set of shapes. Pattern four of E minor pentatonic or three of G major pentatonic, we start with the B note at the seventh fret of the low E string. Now that B note is followed by the D at the tenth fret. And we've got a whole step or two fret jump up to the E at the twelfth fret, so let's use that as a connector and slide on up. We're going to complete our five note shape with the G and A at the 10th and 12th frets of the A string. We start over at the B at the 9th fret of the D string. D at the 12th fret, we're going to slide to E at the 14th. Next is G and A at frets 12 and 14 of the G string. We're going to go to the B at the 12th fret of the B string, D at fret 15, slide into E at fret 17, and we complete this one with the G and A at frets 15 and 17 of the high E string. We are moving right along and we are dominating the guitar neck. I love it. On to the next set of shapes. Pattern five of E minor, pattern four of G major, starts at the D note at the 10th fret of the low E, followed by the E at the fret 12. We go to the G at the 10th fret of the A string, then the A at the 12th fret. Now this pattern is a little different because our first opportunity to slide into connector happens on the fourth and fifth notes of the pattern. We're going to slide from that A note at 12 into the B at fret 14. Then things start over with the D, E, and G at frets 12 and 14 of the D and G strings. I should have said D, E, G, and A. Then we're going to slide into the B at fret 16 of our G string. Then we're going to play D, E, G, and A at frets 15 and 17 of the B and high E strings. And then slide into the B at the 19th fret. This is a really fun one because this whole pattern consists of whole steps. None of the minor third or three fret intervals in this pattern, so it feels really good under the fingers. Of course, with some practice, they're all going to feel good, but this one feels good right out of the gate. Now, here we are at our last set of shapes. We're going to start at pattern one of E minor pentatonic or pattern five of G major. We're going to be up at the 12th fret. So we start at the E note at the 12th fret. We're going to play E and the G at fret 15. From there, we've got two frets up to the A at the 17th fret, so there's our connector. Complete the five note shape by playing the B and D on frets 14 and 17 of our A string. So we've got E and G at frets 14 and 17 of the D string, and then we slide into the A at fret 19. Now we've got a B and a D at frets 16 and 19 of the G string. The last five notes of this sequence are E and G at fret 17 and 20. We're going to move into the A at the 22nd fret. Then we've got B and D 
at frets 19 and 22. Bam, we have traversed the entire neck of the guitar. Now, of course, we were ascending with all of those shapes. And to descend, we just reverse the order. Take the first set of shapes we learned. We had notes one and two, slide into three, then play four and five. Descending, we would play five and four, three, slide to two, and then one. Take that all the way up the neck. And let's take it back down, descending. Now, the next logical step for practicing would be to set up your metronome or turn on a drum loop or even a backing track, however you like to practice. And you want to start getting these up to speed while making sure that you're playing in time. You'll also want to practice playing them in different subdivision, eighth notes, eighth note triplets, 16th notes. I'm going to leave you with one more thing to practice. This is a little more advanced, but if you've gotten everything so far, you're going to get this too. We're going to first play up all the five note shapes of one of our patterns. So let's start on the first one we learned at the G on the low E string. When we get to the last note of those shapes on the high E string, I want you to shift up to whatever note is next in the pentatonic scale on that string. And in this case, it would be the G at the 15th fret. And then we're going to turn around and descend through what was our second set of shapes that ends on an A note, or it ended on this G note, but we're going to turn it around. If you'll remember, we played G, E, D, B, and we're going to slide into A, and we're going to descend all the way to the A at the fifth fret of the low E string. You could also practice flipping that around, starting with that second pattern, descending first, and then ascending back up through that first pattern. So the point is, mix these things up every way you can think of. Practice to the point that you can play them not so much by thinking about them, but by hearing them in your head and letting that guide your fingers. When you can do that, that's the point where you're starting to achieve fluency, like I mentioned in the intro. Now, of course, that's going to take some time. Work with your diagrams, work with drum loops, work with your backing tracks. And of course, play these patterns in every key. It's really easy to think you've got something learned cold and then you're playing with some buddies or you're out at a jam session and somebody calls up in a tune that's in a weird key and everything just falls apart. I know because it's happened to me. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a concept that I know will really help you make your way around the guitar neck. A big part of playing really good guitar solos is to be in the right register on the guitar to really convey the emotion that you're trying to get across to the listeners. And these techniques are going to help you move around the guitar neck from place to place with ease. So thanks for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out more cool lesson content every week. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if there's a topic that you'd like to learn more about. I'll try to get to it. And as always, work hard, play hard, have fun, and never stop learning. See ya.